Hi, it's Hope, and welcome to the video. This is going to be my August mid-month wrap-up, which is kind of hard to believe. I think I said this in my mid-month wrap-up, but it's hard to believe it's even August and now, let alone the end of August. So, let's just get started. Um, these are only the books that I've read from about the 16th on, so the last about 15 days of the month. So if you want to see what I read the first half of the month, um, I will leave a link and I will leave um, a link in the description or a little eye card. Um, and if I sound sick, it is because I am recovering from a cold. Um, so yeah, I love that. But let's start off with the um, like stats. So if I look over here, it is because I have this. I have all the stats on my computer. So. I read 16 books across 6,918 pages. My average star rating was a 4.2, which is usually my average rating overall, over the span of the year pretty much. And for the um, like intended audience, it wasn't that diverse, it was 15 young adult and one new adult and then for the genres again it wasn't that diverse with 13 fantasies and um, three contemporaries I just I guess I just didn't feel like reading more than that and I didn't realize it was just that although one of those contemporaries can kind of also could also double up with the like romance genre but it's I'd call it more of a contemporary than a romance but you'll see which one I'm talking about later so now on to the actual books so first we're gonna start off with Zeros by Scott Westerfield Margot Lanigan and Deborah Biancotti um, and this is a um, book where we follow these six California teenagers all who have these different type of abilities um, that they're basically kind of almost like have like superpowers but like not superpowers if you get what I mean and this book we we follow those six teens um, trying to fix a mistake that the one boy named Ethan caused um, and all of that. I'm trying to figure out how to describe this without like going too in depth, but basically this boy named Ethan does something that he shouldn't have and it causes him to be like um the police are looking for him and the other others have to hide him and then one of the girls named Kelsey um her dad is also involved in this thing that Ethan got into kind of um, and all of that I love the um, powers of this my favorite character is Ethan but my favorite person that has the powers like my favorite power is we have um, a girl named Riley who is blind but her super like her superpower type thing is to be able to see out of other people's eyes. So she can't see out of her own because she's blind, but when she uses her powers, she can look into other people's eyes and see the world around her, which I find so unique that I've never seen anything like it where it's like, first of all, a blind character who we see her kind of struggle to be blind, but when she uses her powers it helps her to be able to see where she's going see what she's doing and help her friends but there are a bunch of cool powers um, like we have someone that can like blow up electricity and all of that is just a very fun book I originally was going into this thinking I wasn't gonna like this but I forgot to mention I gave this a four star but I went in this knowing nothing but the back and and 
that was it and I've never heard anything about this book but it's honestly a really good book and I will definitely be continuing this series eventually. I actually own the second book in the series. Um, so I'm going to pick that up sometime in the future because this was really good. Next we have After by Anna Todd and this I gave a four star. This we follow a girl named Tessa who goes to um, like university and she ends up getting um, like, she's this typical, like, goody two-shoes, tries to get straight A's, doesn't drink, doesn't party, doesn't do anything of that. She's a goody two-shoes. What you, whatever you think of a goody two-shoes, that is Tessa. But when her roommate introduces her to a boy named Harden, who is this bad boy with tattoos and piercings and an overall, like, cocky attitude, Everything around her changes as she starts to become friends with Harden and then eventually more. Um, and this was a reread for me this month. And I, this, I'm going to do just a quick little PSA. I do this every time I mention the series. But yes, this is not a good book. It is a very it's not a good book but it's not a bad book. The content in the book it definitely is a um, bad content. It is it kind of almost glamorizes um, toxic relationships and emotional abuse and all of that which are some things that I definitely do not support or do not condone or anything do not wish upon anyone. But the book is good in my opinion I know a lot of people hate it you either love it or you hate it but I'm not I'm not gonna talk about that much more because well I don't have much more to say it's a I think it's good a lot of people think it's bad it shows toxic things but yeah next we have King of Fools by Amanda Foodie and I gave this five stars this was also a reread. There was a lot of rereads this month. Um, that's literally apparently all I wanted to do. But um, King of Fools is the sequel to Ace of Shades, and Ace of eh, Ace of Shades is about a um, follow a girl named Anne whose mother went missing after traveling to the city of New Rains for a visit, and then Anne ends up having to travel to New Rains to try to find her mother, and. She ends up getting roped up with this boy named Levi, who is the um, leader of a gang, and things go from there and all of that. It is a very, like, kind of like corrupt Las Vegas type inspired um, city with gangs and violence and all of that, and the magic system is really cool, and in King of Fools we follow. Um, Ace of Shades, and I can't really say much, but I love this series. I'm so excited for the sequel, Queen of Volts, to come out. Literally, it comes out tomorrow as I'm filming. It comes out in less than six hours as I'm filming this, but when this is released, it would have came out yesterday. Um, and I'm so excited for the sequel, and I don't really have much more to say, um, except I love this book. Um, the Shadow Game series, um, which is what the series with Ace of Shades and King Fools is technically called, the Shadow Game series, I would recommend that to anyone who has not picked it up. Like, if you have not picked it up, pick it up. It is great. It shows, um, we have a bunch of diversity, um, and all of that, and I just love the series. Next, I'm going to kind of talk about these two books kind of together because, well, they're like, I read book one and book two in a series. But The Hunt by Frost K, I gave it five stars. And The Hunt, we follow a girl named Tempest who's, who, when she was a child, her mother died and she got taken in by the these group of people called the Hounds. And the Hounds are basically this world's version of an assassin. Um, like a royal assassin for the king of the country and Tempest ends up 
being the first female hound ever. And she gets sent on this mis mission, mission. She gets sent on this mission to kill the jester, who is supposedly this person that is creating these like drugs that lead to illness or something like that. But once she goes and she goes to find this jest jest jester, everything that she's known changes. And then the rook is the following that where she's actually working with the jester kind of against the king but then she's also working with the king and I give that five stars um, The Hunt and the Rook are a really cool series I'm I I just want to quickly talk about the cliff like the very last like four lines of the book in the Rook had me I read it like five times over and I was just like I'm sorry fucking what now I'm sorry what that changes everything I'm so excited for when the next book the air comes out but that doesn't come out till January I think I think that is I don't know maybe it says 2021 I'm hoping January because the first book was released in January of this year so maybe it might be like January August January that's what I'm hoping of I'm rambling now but um, this is also a series I would totally recommend um, Twisted Kingdom series by Frost K I love them um, it is the easiest way I'd kind of describe it is like if you like things like Sarah J Mass, you'd like this series because it's like this like assassin dark fantasy enemies to lovers a lot's going on that is kind of my pitch I guess for this series so yeah next we have how to break an evil curse by Laura Morrison and this we follow a girl named Juliana who is cursed she was cursed by um her father's one friend that um, she cannot be in contact with sunlight. Um, if she is in contact with sunlight, she will die. So she ends up living in the du castle dungeons because that is the only place that ensures there are there is no light. But since the age of eight years old, she's been scooping away in the tunnel, way a tunnel up to the surface to then go explore the city and we see her do this and she ends up stumbling upon people that get her in trouble. Then we follow a second character that I can't remember the name of for the life of me. Yeah, I can't remember the name for the life of me and uh, basically he is the um, supposed cure for the curse and it is just, it's a very like, um, I don't know how to even explain this, but I only gave this a three star because of the way it's told. It is told in the way that it's almost like you, the reader, are being read the story from somebody else. It says things like, oh dear reader, or um, unlike us in our world, or like things like that that say basically say that like you are kind of being told this story by somebody else. And I did not like that. Um, I did like the ending though. There was the ending that was kind of like, oh, that changes everything. And this is a series that I might consider um, continuing. This book actually does not come out until October 13th. I was lucky enough to get an arc, arc through NetGalley. But I might continue this series in the future. I have yet to decide. But yeah. Next we have Next we have Late to the Party by Kelly Quindlen and this I gave a 3.5. This we follow a um, 17 year old girl named Cody who has never gone to who's never gone to a party, never drank, never done any type of drugs, never has been kissed. Um, and her friends end up calling her from a party that um saying that they need to be picked up they're drunk she's a type of friend that's like yeah sure i'll do it but when she ends up going to pick up her friend she ends up she ends up stumbling upon a boy named ricky making out with another guy in the bushes and she agrees not to tell anyone because well she's that type of person and all of that everything goes on her and ricky end up becoming friends um and uh, 
and Cody ends up kind of joining Ricky's friend group and kind of all of those things end up being that, well, she has. She went to a party, she drank, she smoked weed, and she kissed her first girl and has a girlfriend. Because, well, I didn't mention before, but Cody is a lesbian. Um, and I like this, but nothing, like, stuck with me as... I hoped it would. I could have hoped more things that would have, would have stuck with me because I'm kind of like Cody. I'm not like your typical teenager. I don't go to parties. I don't drink. I'm not going to mention anything about the drugs because like, mm, but like I've never kissed anyone and I'm queer. So I thought maybe I'd maybe see some of myself in Cody, but I didn't. And I think that's maybe what disappointed me, because going in, I was like, oh yeah, I'm kind of like Cody, maybe I'll resonate with the story, but I didn't. Like, it's a good story, it's a good story, but like, I felt like I needed more, I don't know. I don't know. That's what I'm really, I don't know, but, yeah. Next we have The Queen of Gin by Helena Rookwood and Elm Vince, and this I gave a four star. And this is the fourth and final book in the Desert Knight series, so I kind of have to explain the first book um, to even get to the fourth book, but basically the first book is about a princess named Zadie who ends up traveling to this different country because she's being betrothed to the sultan of this country and things go awry where she ends up with a jinn and um, associating herself with the queen of thieves in the city that she is living in and all of that and this book is I don't even know how to describe this without spoiling it, but this book follows after um, Zadie and Kazmin, um, which is like her betrothed, her fiance, after their wedding goes awry and Zadie gets kid kidnapped, it's her getting saved and then this big final battle that I can't even describe. I'm honestly kind of spoiling the series, but um, the Desert Knight series overall is a really good series. It is a kind of Middle Eastern inspired um, series and all of that. It is very fun. The books are really quick. I think they're like all under 300 pages or around 300 pages, so it's really quick. Um, and I would just overall 100% recommend the series. Um, and I love the little ep the little kind of like epilogue thing. It is so cute. Um, yeah. Then we have The Hunter and the Maid by Caitlin Davis. And this I gave a 4.5 out of 5 stars. And this, I honestly have no idea how to um, describe this. I literally just finished this last night. So I'm kind of still kind of pro trying to process. But the first book in the series is The Raven and the Dove. And the Raven and the Dove follows, um, well, we have multiple point of views, but I'm going to focus on two. First, we have, um, Lana, Le Lana, Lana, I think that's how you pronounce the name, Lana, who is the, um, princess of the House of Peace. And then we have Rafe, who is the prince of the House of Whispers. And basically, we are in this world where there are these um, different houses that each correspond with a different type of like god which has each of the different people have different type of like wings so Lana has dove wings and then Rafe has raven ring raven wings um, and we start off with um, there being this kind of like trial for being betrothed because in this world it's a lot of like 
every generation there's this trial and then you pick whoever you want because it's kind of I don't know it's kind of hard but at the end of the Raven the Dove I am gonna kind of spoiler uh, I'm struggling with this a lot actually like it's kind of it's a very intense series so it's like I don't know um, but in the hunter and the mage we now follow Lana and Rafe while they are under the war under the world that they know so basically we have our upper world which are these islands that they're like that like Lana and Rafe are from and then there's the kind of like the they call it the mist and under the mist there is an entirely different world that the people above do not know exist and Lana and Rafe find themselves in the under the mist in the world below and they have to kind of traverse that while um, Lana is kind of not kidnapped but taken by the king of that of the the, the mist I'm just gonna call it the mist and then Rafe is with these pirates but then we also follow characters above in the world above we follow Xander who is Rafe's brother and then Cassie who is Lana's best friend and we follow them kind of doing their thing up there and I don't really even know how to describe this because there is so much going on and it is such a good book there's like I uh, I don't even know how to like describe anything in this it is just so like <laughs> like I, I sucked at describing it already and I'm still like lost for words on what happened like there there's there's some, there, like there's probably one of the cool one of the coolest things I've ever read in the book happen in this um and let's just say it involves a dragon and it is honestly really cool like visually trying to imagine it is like oh like goosebumps so cool I am so excited to see where Caitlin Davis takes this series um and yeah I just I'm, I'm just gonna shut up about this because because I've probably been rambling on it for like five minutes now and then finally we have City of Fallen Angels and City of Lost Souls by Cassandra Clare and these are the um, fourth and the fifth book in the Mortal Instruments series and I'm not really going to explain these books because if you don't know what the Mortal Instruments series is are you living under a rock and just go google it and check it out um, but I absolutely love these books I gave them each five stars um, I love this entire series um, we get introduced into one of my favorite villains in well in this book in this book technically in both um but I felt like I had to just talk about these I love these books and then I'm also quickly going to mention um City of Henley Fire I am only 314 pages into this um so I'm not quite 50% so that's why I'm not really count I'm not really counting this as a August read I'm going to be counting this as a September read but yeah so briefly, those were all of the books, well those were all of the books I read in the second half of August. Um, if, again, if you want to see what I read in the first half, check out the link in the ad card or the link in the description. And I hope you enjoyed this video. Like, comment, subscribe, and bye!